The nature of AI filmmaking is too explosive to bottle up. But early in the space, we are already seeing entirely new cinematic ideas exploding on the scene in ways never before possible. To understand the new machine cinema, you must study cinema in the first place. Cinema has always been about filmmakers evolving directly alongside the limitation of present day technology and in the process, evolving alongside these limitations, thereby developing entirely new standards. It is how the language of cinema was born and how it has evolved. It does not come out of the gate fully formed, it evolves from the very limitation it is lambasted for. I don't speak only of silent films, but categories from the German expressionists who turned limited lighting into dramatic shadows to all the international new wave movements, directors who made handheld cameras a signature of artistic rebellion. Constraint has always mothered innovation. Most exciting is the new AI cinema. This brand new art form has begun like a nuclear missile on the film industry. I compare the birth of AI to crawling through the desert, dying of thirst, coming upon a spring and dipping a cup into the water. While drinking from the cup, someone uh, is screaming uh, in your ear. But the glass is half empty, and your response is, it's water. AI has brought us a brand new set of limitations, and how wonderful. Celebrate limitation always. For it means we fell upon a brand new cinematic language. At last! Remember, the foundation of silent films lead to absolutely everything that came after. It rapidly evolved mass audience visual literacy at turbo speed. Slow cinema is something that has found its place in recent years as a natural fit for independent films' economic constraints. Any independent filmmaker can make a slow film on their iPhone and achieve a certain level of artistry, where viewers relish in the experience of the passage of time, all bottled up. Fast cinema, however, has remained largely unexplored territory, except with prestige directors finding the sweet spot of art and entertainment. Directors like Martin Scorsese, Oliver Stone, and Danny Boyle. This is because cinematic resources are cost prohibitive, and naturally, fast films require more resources. This is because cinematic resources are cost prohibitive. And naturally, fast films require the most amount of resources. AI changes this equation fundamentally. By eliminating the economic pressures in cramming more content into less time, AI now enables the independent filmmaker to create the kind of fast, dynamic cinema that moves at the speed of thought itself. I call this the speed of the mind. When directing Dread Club Vampire's verdict, the number one remark I get is how fast the film moves. This was not intentional. It was a necessity. I discovered that AI filmmaking presents two paths. You could attempt to stand at pace, where shots linger long enough for the uncanny valley to take hold. Or, you could embrace a more dynamic approach through heavy use of montage, flashback, storytelling, and overlay. With no economic constraints, you can do this at no cost. The film only worked because it moved fast, because it kept your attention on the filmmaking, not the AI. The speed is a feature, not a bug. When I watch Tasha Caulfield's Bruce Lee film, Be Like Water, a breakthrough achieving the speed of mind, we talked about how the new generation came up on TikTok and they have short attention spans and that we are now creating new films to match these attention spans. More and more it is feeling like all of AI, not just one branch within it, is an idea meeting its time. Looking back, it's so obvious it was leading to this. The invisible cut is a principle in studio filmmaking. An audience should never be aware they are watching a film as a baseline standard. Now, of course, this goes out the way with cartoon language or something like a Baz Luhrmann film, but I present AI filmmaking by contrast. Not the invisible cut, but the invisible machine. What I posit is AI has pushed us to the furthest possible point in the history of cinema, to this point where technology is no longer in your way. Even just a taste of cinema at the speed of the mind feels like constructing a movie out of thin air. How frightening, how revolutionary. Yes, the pieces of the movie are discordant and varied, but we are reaching into the nether. Both our hands spread like minority report, grasping it in our fist and pulling it back into reality where we assemble it. We are never thinking, ha ha, I'm an AI filmmaker and this is AI, damn you. We are thinking, that piece goes there. We are never thinking, but this isn't real. I need a camera, a crew, actors, and catering, or else I shan't be respected. We are thinking, how can I align the Rubik's Cube? 
The invisible machine is an evolution beyond the invisible cut. It's a filmmaker's doctrine. For now, this is afforded to us for the first time. An audience values immersion escape. Getting lost in an experience, why can't a filmmaker value the same? With the path of least resistance to his vision, why can't a filmmaker value immersion, escape, getting lost in the experience of making the film completely untethered to real-world bottlenecks? Now film tools can offer this by proxy. With enough of an advanced skill set, the most complex technical wizards are in your very muscle memory. They eventually arrive at the invisible machine by sheer proxy of experience. But they are tethered to the real world, to physical tools. They are tethered by the financial constraints of access Accessing them, finances few of us have. This, I would wager, is the same to the invisible machine by proxy. But I would also add this. When everything is flattened, when one has achieved mastery of a complex traditionally analog, I don't use this word literally, but a catch-all to the original digital verse, analog, evolution, versus a filmmaker doing the same with the full AI tool set. The AI filmmaker will go exponentially further with his invisible machine than the craftsman with his analog tool set. When flattened, the performance would be some three to four fold in outcome. But actually, it is quite further. To understand just how much further, we have to look at finances. When we talk about budgetary differences between AI and trad film, we are not talking about three to four fold. I calculated that doing the performances traditionally in carriage rides, 60 speaking character parts, it would have cost $280,000. In AI, it cost me $30. But where does this land in terms of outcomes? Where is your effort better spent? Mastering analog tools or mastering the AI tool sets of a $100 movie. That is 10,000 times a benefit to the invisible machine. And while this seems like an enormous number, consider the real world constraints of mastering an analog craft. You are just one piece in the mechanism. With the invisible machine, you are the film itself. There is no question here. The analog tool set will afford films as we know them. AI toolset will create outcome of the sort we can't even imagine. The analog is based in resistance. The AI is based on infinity. And how exciting is that? Think for a second the speed available to us. The minimum viable product in filmmaking terms I use to mean the path of least resistance. This is the area most directors start and end. With the invention of the camera, these were the silent films developing basic visual language. With AI, I do not speak of fast cinema as an evolution of this visual storytelling language. Instead, that fast cinema is the beginning of a brand new cinematic language entirely. The speed of the mind. What happens when the basic proof, the path of least resistance, the minimum viable product, begins with the impossible? The beginning point then is not basic visual language, it is speed of the mind. We are all building the walls, paving the road, decorating the home. We assume it will just be more film, but audiences are looking for AI films to accomplish what traditional filmmaking never could. The new machine cinema at the speed of the mind is fulfilling the promise of Martin Scorsese. His entire approach to cinema, from the rapid fire editing in Mean Streets to the groundbreaking montage structure of Goodfellas, all represent an attempt to capture thought patterns on film. This mirrors Howard Hughes in the Martin Scorsese film the Aviator, when told about how his latest airplane broke all speed records, Hughes replied, she'll go faster. Scorsese never saw his films as fast. It was just how his mind worked and cinema was a means of expressing his mind on screen. Like tennis champions who are just tuned at a way higher level, their regular accustomed play is to an outside observer, light speed. But Scorsese also believed his films had hit a wall, that there were faster models at the speed of consciousness itself. She'll go faster. He was unknowingly anticipating AI films achieving the speed of the mind. Studies have shown that visual processing speed increases exponentially with each generation. Our ability to absorb and understand rapid visual information is evolving at breakneck pace. What comes next? The answer is infinity. And what will be found in infinity? Whatever that you seek shall be found in infinity. It is not just on screen, but in the conceptual formulation of film. As with rigor, 
we are now faster problem solvers. Things that might have entered your mind six months after the production of a film, you can arrive at during its production. This means not only faster films, but better and more thorough ones. We're making movies that move at the speed of the mind, and with AI, every area achieves a thoroughness, achieving in the highest possible standard in the arts for the first time. Available to you and I without requiring a bankroll and a committee demanding creative oversight. In the production of a very long carriage ride, I still longed for even faster, seamless craft. I remembered Nolan Arbor, patient zero in Neuralink, and how he described speed of the mind, and how Neuralink allowed him to play shooter video games at an elite level. But we are only at the very dawn of the new machine cinema. For it is not just the evolution of cinema, it is evolution itself as our minds race away from our constraints and new frontiers reveal the future we always wondered about, we should not fear our inability to perceive what happens next, but anticipate that AI will lift humanity and machine together to see things at the speed of the mind. This is why I push back on the fear response. There is an assumption of a frightening future without realizing it's us controlling this future, not an anonymous fighting ball. The future will be warm, strange, and human, same as it will be augmented, bold, and machine. We are not replacing ourselves, we are emerging. This has been Speed of the Mind, from Huru Jackson's The New Machine Cinema. Foundational essays in AI film theory, now available online and in bookstores.